Hi, welcome to Your Basic, the podcast where we read YA fantasy and avoid our adult responsibilities. I'm one of your hosts, Deadly, and the house is my favourite character. And I'm your other host, Danny, and I'm confused about the wingspan chart now because this book's just confused me a lot. So, spoiler warning, of course, this is a bonus episode and we're going to talk yeah. about A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass, which has only just come out, like, this month. So, if you haven't read A Court yep. of Silver Flames <laughs> and do not want to be spoiled, we recommend that you do not listen to this episode until you have, and then we can talk about it all together. So, if you haven't, now's the time to leave. Click away, fly but we'll see, away. We'll, we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon when you have read it. Yes, oh my god. Okay, so now all the people that have read the book are here. <laughs> what how you doing, besties? Think? Yeah. yeah. How you all doing? Did you all speed read it like me and Deadly did? Oh or did my god. you take your sweet time like I'm I... sure Sarah intended? I can see this being a good book to take your sweet time with. Like, oof. I would it's absolutely have so taken good. my sweet time with this book. You know what? I might just read it again and take my sweet time with it. Mm, like a good leisurely lunch. Uh. Like a leisurely read. But just skip all of the bits that aren't the smart. Because no, the smart just... <laughs> was, it was just another level. It was just another level. I'm sure we'll get into that later, but it was really something else. I'm and... still like shook it from the smart. It's funny because we're going straight into the smut, but I think really the smut was the main part of this book. So what did you expect from this? But <laughs> I started reading the book before Deadly did. Yeah. And I sent Deadly a message and I said to her, I'm just warning you now, the smut is another level. Like me and you, we, we used to smut, but this mm. is, this is some spicy smut. Like Sarah really likes, <laughs> like she stepped it up. She really did. It went from... Like, I feel like it was cayenne pepper, and now it's like ghost pepper. Now it's ghost pepper. It's it's spicy. It's, Mama. it's ice. It's eye wateringly <laughs> hot. I was clutching my pearls and looking over my shoulder, and I was reading it at home alone in bed. Like, too much, but just enough. Honestly, there's nothing that's too much to me for me to read in. Do you know what, though? <laughs> I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea. Because obviously I was just panicking. I was like, I need to get the book done as soon as possible because yeah. I'm going to get spoiled if I don't. So obviously I took the book to work because I work nine to five, like five days a week. So I have like that's like a, eight hours of my day where I don't get to read. So on my breaks, I read books. I Can you tell me why <laughs> some god decided or omnipotent being went haha danny every single smut scene you'll get to when you're at work you can read for an hour at home an hour literally just before you go to bed perfect time for smut you know when you when you're in bed on your own trying to wind down for the day Ooh, yeah. that's per- perfect time to read some smutty scenes no no the <laughs> goddess above when danny oh this is a joke because you're gonna be at work with like people that definitely are nosy <laughs> and looking over your shoulder and we're gonna throw all the spicy scenes at you. Yeah. That's literally what oh, happened. That was some cruelty from, from the gods above. That, so that was you, some Percy so Jackson were, god shit. Yeah, the cauldron really said Danny <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. That's literally what that cauldron said. So you literally were clutching did. your pearls. You were clutching your pearls at home, I was clutching my pearls at work. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that that's more intense. Uh, but luckily yeah. I have that, that neutral face down where you just think we just look at the page like it's nothing. Um, you know, you know that face that you do when you're reading smut, but yeah. you've got that face and you've been reading it for way too many years now, so you're used to it, so you've got that face, yeah. but inside you're yelling. That's literally what I was doing when I was reading this book. <laughs> there were some moments where I literally you know where you have to like put the book aside. And just be like, whoa. And then yeah. like pick it back up. That yeah. was this book. And that was for Literally. some of the story as well, not just the smart. Like some of the 
the like I the fan girl about Nessian so much. Um, Nessian are like my OTP, so I was really oh. lo- loving it. I love it so much. I'm fully on the train with you now because before I was like, yeah, I ship it, I guess, and now I'm like, hello. You were like, incredible. how could I not ship it? Literally, I was like, I was blind, but now I see. Like, yeah. Okay, I feel like so... we've we've talked about it a lot, <laughs> but we haven't even really got into the podcast. So, of course, in true Danny and Deadly manner, we're going to do what we liked and what we disliked, and we're going to start yep. with the dislikes. We're going to change up. Oh. We're starting with the dislikes this time. Yeah. Well, we thought we could end with the things we like, so it like yeah, ends with like end a sweeter a taste note. in your mouth. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Yeah, I oh, think we, we we're both in agreement that we we did love the book though. Mm, yeah, it, like as we, I think you said it to me, and it was perfect. It's like it's by no means a perfect book, by yeah. no means. But I absolutely loved it. Like the the characters, the story. I think because now we've got into a where we're comfortable with the characters. Yeah, we can just kind of roll with it. Um, yeah, my yeah. friend Tilda, they put on their story that. Um, it was like reading fan fiction because we already know the characters yeah. and they they're like our family now and it was like reading <laughs> fan fiction and yeah i think we both said that the book was it wasn't the best like it wasn't the writing wasn't fantastic it wasn't profound no. in a way that if you thought wow that writing is stunning i didn't look you know what the storyline wasn't what, what, what was the phenomenal was there a storyline? We don't know. It was sort of just like a journey. We'll, we'll go. For, it was a journey rather than yeah. a plot. I think yeah. that we were meant to be going on completely. But I, from an entertainment point of, point of view, I was thoroughly entertained the whole way oh, through, yeah. and I really enjoyed the book. So I'm not going to apologise for really enjoying it. And we also obviously really enjoyed the smut because that's what you oh. read the books for. In my completely. <laughs> Some of you oh. obviously probably read it for the, for the plot. But I definitely do not read it. <laughs> I feel like I used to be such a prude for poor Sarah J. Mars. I was like, oh no, okay, a bit of spice. But now I'm like, get me to the smut scene right now. The thing is, though, yeah, I'm just very accustomed to smut because I read fan fiction way too young. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, yeah, the smut still it made me blush. It did. This smut made me blush. And we're back on the smut, and we need to talk about what we. What uh, yeah, we, we need to get onto our dislikes. Okay, we're we're getting onto this list because otherwise we'll be rambling for years. For years. First thing we didn't like was this whole scenting thing, which is a problem we have with a lot of Sarah J. Mass books in general. Is like them being able to scent arousal or being able to send oh, whatever i'm like i don't want to know this isn't even like specific to this book because it literally like deadly said happens in every single book that she writes it's this scent that people give off and i obviously understand that they're not human that they're yep. something else but they're humanoid so to me the fact that they can send each other like obviously like dogs can <laughs> when like dogs <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> it's like similar heat. to when yeah, like when a dog's in heat and they can smell <laughs> the other dog so then they know they're ready to mate and I hate that. The thought that like, that is just borderline like bestiality vibes for me. Yeah, and it, it really does it. freak me out. And I can like I don't know they're not human and I know that that's part of the what she's getting at that they're not human. They're like other beings, but it's just not it for me. The thought of like someone ever, some, someone being able to smell my arousal really does freak me out. Literally, and it does put a down on, on like <laughs> when it's. Do you know when they're in like when they're in like a hot situation, like and you think, oh yeah, this is hot, and then it's like I, I can smell you, and you think, oh great, <laughs> like what is that smell? Like I'm trying to think of what the smell would be. Oh my, like, it's just what we both compared it to is we both stopped reading uh, Song of Achilles at the same point and if you've read the book you might know which point because it both shocked us um, and it just reminds me of that it's just off-putting for uh, for this anyway mm. it's definitely off-putting i mean and you know what i think it's very unfair for me to claim that sarah's the only one that does this because i've just recently read from blood and ash and mm-hmm. the same thing happens in that and i think it does happen in like you know those werewolf books that you read yeah. but then i feel like i can I could understand it more from that 
perspective because they are technically yeah, dogs. Yeah, like, that, Do you know is, what I mean? that is bordering on bestiality anyway, so you kind of get away with oh, it. Yeah. I mean, I don't like mm. it still. I don't read it. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, no, that's but okay, it makes more werewolves. like thematic like sense. Yeah. yeah. So that's just the first thing we didn't like. We didn't like the, the copious amounts of scent that all the characters used yeah it just didn't do anything for us so the next thing we didn't like was the double standards that the characters oh my god literally they give every other character so many chances but nesta no no and i know that a lot of people don't like like nesta's character and it there was a struggle for them to relate to and i think personally from my experience being i'm so i'm 22 years old deadly you're 23 four now as of like oh my god yeah ago. sorry i'm nearly 23 <laughs> so yeah you're 24 and so we're in like early 20s still obviously mm-hmm. we're not old but like nesta's 25 i i think so yes. obviously we're quite close to her age so we sort of understand that when you're an adult, you go through certain things and you you just go through it a bit. But And yep. I just feel like she obviously was a bitch, but that's like half the reason I liked her. But yeah. <laughs> like, in I feel like in Akatar, we read about like Feyre's trauma mm-hmm. and everyone could, everyone was like, yeah, she's, she was obviously, she went through like the trauma of like having to go through the trials with Amarantha Mm -hmm. and um with the worm and like obviously the trauma that she had with tamlin where he just was not understanding of what the hell she was going through and what she was feeling and he just ignored her and didn't do her any flavors and i feel like reese was reese and moore and amran every single person was so understanding of favor's struggles Mm -hmm. and they just tried their best to help her like so much but then when it came to the fact that nesta was like forced into the cauldron against her will (laughs) like her sister was she had to watch Literally. that she couldn't do any of it she went through that she obviously had ptsd like severely and mm. i feel like everyone just kind of went oh fuck you like, yeah, like oh well you you were mean and i'm like but thing is nesta was groomed from an early age to have a certain lifestyle which was then ripped away from her at a young age which is trauma in itself to then add more trauma on top of it to then see her dad die in front of her like there's so much (laughs) she's such a complex character i know it's like trauma after trauma and you know what and like people deal with grief very differently and Mm -hmm. they deal with trauma very differently and i think we definitely see that with with pharaoh and nesta the way that they are very different and the way that they like deal with trauma in different mm. ways um obviously it's going to be easier for certain people to relate to ne- to Feyre than it is yeah. for them to like relate to Nesta so obviously I'm not saying that if you don't relate to what Nesta's going through then you haven't got a right to not dislike her I definitely think that what she did like her behavior wasn't right but I'll cut all the other characters some slack like you know Amran and uh, Cassian has always been very understanding of the, what she's going through and really tried mm-hmm. his best and so did Amran to be honest and Nesta really t- she pushed those people away and to be honest Feyre did as well she did try but they yeah. already had a fragile relationship they had a fragile relationship so it was never going to be easy for her to get through to her sister Elaine what does Elaine ever do no, <laughs> sorry Elaine you never do anything I never feel like I see you interacting with anybody Trying we're, to help we're not in situations. the Elaine fan club at all. No, you're just there. But we'll go on to that later, I guess. Um, it's it's the problem I have. Okay, so we're going to get... I feel like a lot of people are going to not like me for what I'm about to say. The problem I have is the problem I have with Reese, And I sort of understand... I understand it now, finish the book, that we understand that Reese was protective towards Feyre because she was pregnant. Now I understand that. But to begin with, that, my, my brain could not comprehend. I was like, what the hell are you doing? I thought, like, why are you yeah. being so mean to her? She's obviously got PTSD. She's obviously... You yourself had trauma, Reese. I was like, you were, like, sexually assaulted, were you not? Literally. And she... Nesta was sexually assaulted too. Add that to her pile of shit that's happened to her. Exactly. And to be honest, yeah, Reese didn't know that that had happened. Or did he? No. No, I don't think he did. So I can't blame him for that. But Reese's own trauma really 
I feel like he just didn't take that into account and was just horrible to her constantly. Literally, and then, he doesn't help at all. He's just rude. He's rude. And then I thought we got to a turning point when she had the nightmare and he went into her like mind and when she was having the nightmare to calm her down, like he smashed through the window because that bit confused me. I was like, what just smashed through the window? I thought it was the cauldron. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, the cauldron's come through to get her. But no, like Reese went in and he was like, went into her mind and then he came out and Cassian was like, what the hell happened? And he was like, oh God, her trauma is terrible. Then like 10 minutes later, I went straight back to being horrible. <laughs> yeah, there was like... <laughs> So, like, yeah, I could forgive the fact that he was really territorial and, like, or, like mm. had his heckles up until we got to that bit and he was like, oh, I see her trauma and then still proceeded to be horrible about her, still tried to marry her off to Baron. Is it Baron? Yeah, Baron. I think, yeah. I think it's Baron or, yeah, Lucian's brother. And then... Oh, no, what's his name? Baron's no, the dad. No, yeah, Baron's uh, the dad. Eris. Eris. Eris, yeah. Um, there's still like and was and then like obviously Feyre was like no what the hell are you doing and he was like oh he just he just really frustrated me I don't know why <laughs> I just think like what was like Sarah what are you doing like just can everyone just be a bit more literally like, and I understanding can't... also the way people in the fandom talk about Nesta is honestly disgusting <laughs> like just give her a break I think probably because I relate to Nesta more than I do Feyre. Um, so I'm like, just give, leave Britney alone. Yeah, I'm the same. I, Nesta's probably been my favourite character. Not since um, book one. I mean, book one's a fever dream to me now. I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can remember half the stuff happened that, in the first Akita book, but obviously she was made out to be a bit of a cow. But as soon as she, like, she came back and she was like, especially in A Court of Wings and Ruin, I think that's when I really started to love her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really do like Nesta's character. I just think. Well, she's yeah, her just character complex, development is so interesting, and like we just love a complex character who's learning and growing. And yeah, oh, she's great. Yeah, it's yeah the double standards from Reese and especially were not it. I could honestly, not I think it. it was just Reese. It was just Reese that it got on my nerves, and I did forgive him. I forgave him for a little bit and then he, after the dream thing, I thought, why have you just gone back? You've just come back. And then it took, it took all of that time, literally to like the end of the book when he, she saved Feyre, which yeah. of course she was going to do because she was a sister and she does love her. Literally. And just because you don't have a lovey-dovey, huggy relationship with your sister does not mean you love her. And you don't love her. And mm. if that, like, I have a younger sister and I know, like, from experience being the older sister, sometimes... <laughs> You, you you come across as a bit aggressive with your love, but you, it's coming from the right place, and you may not always, mm. you may not always express it in the way you want it to. But it is that you love each other. But that was another thing. It was like she had to say favor, and then he was like, "Oh, thank you so much." And then, yeah. And it's like like she wasn't gonna like like oh, they they yeah. underestimate her at every turn, and they always assume the worst. I think that's my thing is they yeah. don't ever give her a chance because everyone else yeah they've messed up and yeah they've had grief for it but they are given chances whereas Nesta I know she was given like a year to get her shit together but also it sometimes takes longer than that and I think Feyre yeah. did have the right idea of like she needs to train she needs a way to focus but everyone else just doesn't give her a chance and I'm like yeah and it gave uh, like I think I think the main people that I obviously we understand that obviously really did give her a chance was like Feyre obviously gave her a chance Cassian mm -hmm. has always like believed in her and then to be honest I can't really be mad at Amran because they obviously had a tiff and she was her friend yeah. for and like she kind of threw it back in her face I can't really be mad at her Completely. for that and that's Amran's um, character like that it's part of her exactly but yeah just fucking Reese and then anything else happened I just thought of that annoyed me. Oh, yeah, when when Nesta told Feyre about... Oh. So that... When Nesta... So I didn't like the fact that Nesta no. told her in that way. That was wrong. I didn't like that. That wasn't fine, that she told her that, oh, that she couldn't... That if she, that if she, she had the baby, probably then she die would if die. She had the baby. And so would yeah. the baby. Um, oh God. But yeah. I don't like 
the fact that um, they didn't tell Feyre that in the first place. Why did they not tell her? Why? Literally, it's like, that is Feyre's one thing, is she needs to be told that Because that's what was happening with Tamlin, is he didn't tell her anything, he kept her in the dark. Yeah. And I'm like, you know this. All of you know this. So why are you not telling her, especially when it's to do with her life and her child? Yeah, and her body. I reckon body. if you told Feyre early on, when you found out, she would have transformed into an Illyrian with wings. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, would she have? Would she? Because I don't know if you want to. I don't know. Because I was discussing this. I was trying to explain this to my sister what was happening. Because to me, I think I would have wanted to know. And I think if I did know, then I would have tried to have. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know if I could answer that question if I wasn't pregnant. Do you know what I mean? Completely. But I was like, I, I don't know. I if think I... especially in Feyre's yeah. case. But even if she didn't want to, shit. she should have been given the choice. Yeah. They should have said, wanted... there's some scary news. Do you want it or not? Do you want to live in bliss or do you want to... Or they should have given it, they should have told her exactly what was happening and she should have been given the choice as to whether she wanted to transform mm. into an Illyrian again or she wanted to stay in her fey form and not risk it. That option was taken away from her and... I think Nesta either should have told her sooner or told her in a different way, but I, I'm not mad that she told her. I don't think she should have kept her in the dark until the end. That's wrong. No, and that was not that was a misstep on Reese's account. That's another thing. And then when he had the gall to go, get her out of my sight, I was like, to be fair, you should have told yeah, like, her. get her out of my city. I'm like, literally, who are you? <laughs> He's oh. the High Lord, but who are you? <laughs> yeah, literally. I feel like Nesta could be like, take him on. She probably oh, could, she with definitely all the, could with the whole tray. She'd be like, "I know, bye, Nesta." Uh, to be honest, yeah, just Reese would be just. I would have loved to have seen a, a scene where like Reese and Nesta were going off on one at each other. Like, oh fully. my god, it would be amazing. Also, circling back to the pregnancy, it's not on our notes, but um, can we talk about the fact that that baby was conceived whilst they were flying? Like, oh, that, gross. that smut scene. I messaged Daddy and you were like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah, because they both had wings. Yeah, I, do you know what I thought? I don't know why, because obviously they keep going on. This is another thing that kind of freaks me out, is that they talk about, like, the way... <laughs> I've got the giggles. They talk about, like, wait... I, the way I'm going to say this is might cringe some people out, but it's like wing play. Do you know what I mean? I had thought for some reason that they were obviously experimenting with some sort of wing kink thing. That's just where my head went for some reason. Not the fact that it was the this, this scene from A Court of... Uh, um, winter Frost something. and no, Starlight. Frost and Starlight. Yeah, A Court of Frost and Starlight, where they were like shagging in the air. That is not it for me. I just... I hated that scene in general. It was kind of gross. I bring it up all the time as one of my top ten like worst YA moments. But it's just like it. The thing is, though, the scene wasn't even hot. It was like he was like, it's like the way he's described it. It's like I took her in the air or something, and I was like, like ew, no, stop. Just but... imagining like David Attenborough narrating. Yeah, and then <laughs> oh god, and then um. <laughs> Yeah, that's how Nyx was bought. That's how Nyx was conceived. <laughs> I love the name Nyx, though. I think that's such a cute name. You know what? I was sat there and I was thinking, don't say some silly ass name. If you say some silly ass name, I'm dipping. This is the last book I'm ever going to read <laughs> of Akatar. I'm not reading anymore. And then they said Renesmee Nyx. Renesmee, too. Like, oh, oh my God, yeah. I thought it was definitely going to be a Renesmee ass name because, like, <laughs> if we think about it, are the other names normal? Not really. The most no. the most normal one is like Elaine. Yeah. Um. Well, the most boring one's Elaine <laughs> in more than, two, <laughs> more than one way. But um, yeah. Uh, Nick's I I liked. I think it's but cute yeah, I, and it works. It's the adorable. Theme. Yeah. 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 Let's move on to the next bit. We just we were annoyed at Reese this whole book. That's that's what that section was. That we was most of our DMs back and forth were about Reese. TBA. Yeah, and you know what? You know what it is as well. This is one thing that Sarah's really good at. Actually, I mm. think we don't like Reese because I 
I'll hold my hands up. I'm not saying I don't like Reese because I would hold my hands mm. up and say I was simping for Reese the whole time I read Akatar. I think we both were. Obviously, yeah. he was like some tall, dark, handsome, fucking buff, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. fairy with like a massive dick, <laughs> 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 a massive wingspan, and wingspan. it's perfect enemies to lovers. We got that enemies to lovers tension. Anyway, yeah, but. We have to remember Akatar is written in first person from mm-hmm. Feyre's point of view. And this was pointed out to me because I didn't think about that when I was reading it, but this is pointed out to me by my friend Boris. He said, yeah, it's like, she says, I did this, I did that. So that's how we're reading it. We're reading it almost like a diary. So it's like mm. Feyre's diary. So of course we're going to be simping for Reese because she's simping for Reese. Yeah. Aren't true. we? But now we're reading yeah, it from true. Nesta's point of view. Nesta, who doesn't like Reese, of course it's going to get my heckles off. Of course I'm not going to like him because I'm... But it's not necessarily from Nesta's point of view, but we're seeing it... It's Nesta's story. Yeah, we were so seeing it like, kind of through um, her eyes, yeah. He's not going to come across so in the sense. best light because Nesta doesn't like him. And it's Nesta's narrative in this one where it's always been Feyre's narrative and that's when I've always simped for him. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Oh my god. So like, I, um, this is not me being anti Reese at all because I am a simp in fa- Reese. I am a simp, but just in this book, he just was not doing it for me until the no. end. And then he was like, "I was like, yeah, okay, I forgive you. you. Yeah, you only had to do that." And I was like, "I forgive you, but you really did annoy me. <laughs> you annoyed me." Oh my god, the amount of times bullshit was said in this book. So, I actually did a count guys just for the purpose of this podcast i did a bullshit count for the amount of times they said bullshit (laughs) yeah in this whole book they said bullshit it wasn't as many times as i thought it would be 13 times how many times you need to say that that word because you're not come up with another swear word i don't know if it's because she's american maybe I, I feel like we notice it more. Maybe because we're British, we're like... Yeah, because it's kind of like an American swear word. Like, that's bullshit. That's bullshit, yeah. you know? <laughs> bullshit, Vivian. Whereas we... Bullshit, Vivian. Bullshit. <laughs> um, that's... <laughs> that was UK Drag Race, ironically. But, I know. Um, but we... here in the UK, if you weren't aware, we just throw around swear words like it's normal. Whereas I feel we like... Do. Honest, obviously, no offence to our American listeners, because I know there's quite a few of you, but you're just a bit prude. Like, God damn it, it's <laughs> not a swear word. No, We literally throw word. around the C word like it's... It's, yeah, it's like a term of endearment in here. Tesco's. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, so... I think the bullshit was just getting a bit grating. It was just grating on me a little bit. That was just a minor yeah. dislike. Although not as grating as like calls to like. Honestly. That praise. They overdid it. Well, I was like, if you say like calls to like one more time, I'm going to punch this book. Honestly. I was literally ready to throw the book out the window. I was like, oh my god, if someone says like calls to like. <gasps> one more time. We know. We know that like calls to like i loved when nesta was like as you all love to say like calls to like i know I was like, yes i sort of forgave it at that point because i thought okay she's acknowledged the fact that she's <laughs> that she's done it and she's Literally. repeated it a lot and it was favor that kept saying it and i was like favor i'll forgive you i guess it's maybe it's a bit pregnancy brain but you keep saying maybe. that and no one seems to be saying you to stop saying it because they know <laughs> and it's really irritating because it just was. It, I don't oh, even know. It was too much. It was too much. It was like, too much. It was just... They could have said it half the times they did and we still would have got the message. I know. We could, they could have said it once and I would have remembered. If I'm being honest. Yeah, I really literally. do think I would have remembered that. <laughs> Completely. Oh. Honestly. I think we've already, we've already sort of spoken about the writing and how it wasn't the best. I don't really think we need to go into the detail. No, you know what I good writing it's... is. Yeah. Yeah, they know what... Everyone knows what good writing is, and we've sort of just said, like, the amount of times they said bullshit and the amount of times they said, like, course to like kind of goes to, like, say how the writing was not phenomenal. Yeah. But the length of the book, I'm not sure it needed to be that long. Oh, my God. It was when... So, I... When I first saw the book, because Maureen, as we know, got lost in the post somehow... Um, when Daddy opened it on her Instagram story, I was like, that's a 
thick book. It had no business being that thick. It had no business being that thick. And I don't know if it's because Crescent City was so big. She thought, God, this is the standard now for my books. Everyone's going to be disappointed if my books aren't 800 pages long. God, I hope not. We're going to... I just... Oh, God. If the next book's about Elaine and it's 800 pages long, I don't think I'll cope. Sorry, this is a lot of Elaine slander. I don't mean it in that way, but I sort of do. I mean, but, if it's related um, to Asriel, I'll read it for Asriel. But... If it's from Asriel's point of view, I'll read it fine. But if it's from Elaine's point <laughs> of view, I don't know how long I'll last. It'll be hard. Oof. I know. God. Um, it, it but I don't so even thick. think that... Like, it is big. Yeah, I don't even think that that's Sarah's fault. Like, whoever edited that book... Did they even edit it? Because like you had too many bullshits in there, you had too many time like like to likes being like. Yeah, said. I feel like it could have had another pass with the edit comb. Um, there were just bits that could have just not been there, and we could have they could have alluded to parts, and we could have ne- like. It just could have been streamlined. Yeah, I'm trying to think of sections that couldn't be in it, but all, all the only bits that are standing out to me are the important bits. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like the. The only bits I, that I are... feel like we admit all the bits that are there for ages. Like, even... I'm trying to think now. I've literally forgotten all the bits that I thought could be cut out. Um... Like, so just some of the bits, like, maybe in the library, where I just thought... Okay, yeah, we're back in the library. Yeah, Did they, they could have, like... that long? It could be, like, she worked in the library again. Or, like, this happened in the library, but it's... Yeah, it's... And like, like every time she went stuff. down the stairs, did we have to have a whole description of how many stairs and what her breathing was yeah. like? And <laughs> my God, it was it was. There were points where I was like, "Okay, it's this part again. Whew, let's get through it." Yeah, it was repetitive. We went to the library. I guess her life was repetitive, so it wasn't going to be the most exciting. But yeah, I it felt makes sense. Like, long. Yeah, it's like some. If there's there's some books where you're like, okay, this bit. Like it's needed for the long slog to make it worth it in the payoff, but I think because there's so much story, a lot of the like long slog <laughs> was just leading to more, um, rather than leading to payoff. Yeah, it just so much of it. I just thought, oh god, here we go. Again. Even like then I, I all think... the stuff with the queen. Did that need to be oh, in there? Was that worth it? Yeah, was that worth it? <laughs> Did the queen leave? was the queen relevant because she died pretty quick? Literally, she was gone. I'm like, there was so much stuff with like Ares back and forth and his missing soldiers and oh, there's gonna be that. And I'm like, that you and could have literally cut that whole thing and it would have been the same book. Yeah, and then we had that whole thing where Reese was like, "You're my new courtier," and then we. F- like he did one thing he went to see lucy in one time and then like that was it that's all we got from that yeah, then we had literally we had nesta sprinting up and down the stairs every 10 minutes we had yeah. like it could have like, her in the library cut... stacking books again the stacking the books the stairs casting it as the courtier all of the queen stuff they could have literally just said oh we've heard about a dread trove we want you to try and find it and that could have been motivation done yeah, like it didn't. It, it had no business. I mean, I enjoyed it, but those parts, I was like, "Are these adding to the story?" No, not really at all. I guess, like, yeah, we sort of had to make a point of him being a courtier because he was like talking to Eris and and stuff. But did it, was that any different to what he's normally doing? Did we need that whole section where he went to see Lucien and the other the? Where it was like a massive deal that that's what he's yeah, doing. He was that nervous about it. I feel like that just it got led to swept nothing. Under. Yeah. yeah. It's, it was like he was like, oh, I'm so nervous. And then it got swept under the rug. It was like it was natural the second time. And I was like, okay. And like, it was, it was I guess wild. maybe she did it as like a bit where Eris could take the piss. But then I was just like, okay. I, I kind of missed more. She was in the book hardly at all. Yeah, Morrigan. Oh, God. Well, yeah, I know. Morrigan, to be honest, only I was a bit annoyed at her for saying that thing when she was like, if it were up to me, I'd, like, dump you on the edge of the thing. I was like, okay. I mean, another person that has trauma because you were literally dumped at the side of the fucking road, like, in a heap, which was hor- horrible and, like, told on you. Literally. And you're just going to say that to someone else. 
I feel like that's the one thing that I think about. I think, Sarah, what the hell? Every time she does this, she did it with Reese and Feyre when they had sex in his safe place. Oh my God. He, he made for, for he like built. abuse, uh, people that have been abused and then they had sex at. And I thought that is wrong. And then yeah. the fact that that happened to Morrigan and then she went and said that to Nesta. I, it literally was like, oh my God, that isn't right. Like, that's not something you would say. Literally, it felt so odd. It just felt uncomfortable. It felt like a parallel. And I thought, well, why did you have to be mean? Because I like Morrigan doesn't come across as a mean character to me so I just don't know why she couldn't have just been one of the only ones that took the high road she had to make her say that snide comment and it just didn't sit it just felt very out of character and not like her yeah completely absolutely but I miss Morrigan I I I, I, I assume we're gonna get a Morrigan book because obviously I'm I'm assuming like because she's away so much we're gonna have to get a book explaining what she's doing and like why she's doing it yeah. Uh, which I look forward to because I love more, but yeah, it's... Yeah, I like Morrigan. It's just, I was just like, what? Why would you do that? I just, wait, when she said that, I don't, I don't know. I just thought I was very out of character and random. Oh, I think we're coming to, oh, I think that these last bits go into like one. I think we can take us back. This bit, yeah. In, the last parts in our dislikes. It makes my blood boil Reese... just looking at our note. Oh. Reese being high king what What? (laughs) are we for this i don't know like part of me is like do we want to risk peace because that was very traumatic that you all went to war and obviously baron would not be happy and he already wants to go to war like i don't know i felt like it came out of nowhere i was like sorry what It, it i feel like it came out of nowhere but then like Amran, Cassie, and As were all like, of course. And then, like, Reese was like, hold on. I don't think so. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm actually agreeing with you here, Reese. I'm not sure this is the yeah. right thing to do. But I guess he would be good at it. But then at the same time, do we really want, like, an Amar? I don't know. I this know. is another thing. I'm like, this is kind of what Amaranth. Well, she was horrible. It wasn't the same thing. But, like, do we want to go but back to She put like, herself Amarantha above being all ruling? the others. Yeah, literally. I yeah. feel like everyone's got too much, like, dictatorship ptsd yeah like do we want a dictatorship or do we (laughs) it's a bit like i don't know in the uk our politics is that we have um like mps who like represent each constituency so i guess that's a bit like the high lords they represent each court so maybe but then we have one prime minister okay yeah that's true oh yeah reese for prime minister (laughs) Reese for PM or Reese for president. Oh my Someone's god! Someone's gonna bring out merch yeah, now, I, like President Reese. It's probably yeah. I think it actually probably does relate because it's similar in US, like having kind of the uh, for each state having a, a representative. Yeah. yeah, but it it does make me laugh that the the map in the front of the book is literally the UK. Yeah, it is. Oh my god, it actually does look like it. I'm like, okay, so it's literally... Oh my god, I'm looking at it now. Prithian <laughs> is literally the British Isles. <laughs> it's the United it's Kingdom. It kills me. I'm How like, that is the UK. <laughs> the Night Court is Scotland. <gasps> oh my god, the Night Court is Scotland. Scottish Reef, so, that's oh what my we gosh, need. This- this actually goes into something I wanted to bring up, but like, so obviously, me and Deadly and I are British. We're English, so <laughs> oh my god, like, I when know we what read, <laughs> yeah, when we read Akatar, obviously, um, Reese's famous like line is "Hello, favorite darling." Now, in my head, I'm thinking "Hello, favorite darling" in like a in a very well-to-do British accent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then I'm thinking to myself, obviously, all you lovely listeners aren't all from the UK. Some of you are American. Some of you are from Canada, from all over the world, Australia. Australia. So it's your inner monologue. Yeah, it's your inner monologue Australian and American. So when you read those words like, hello, Feyre Darling, do you go like, hello, Feyre Darling? Like in an American accent. Sorry, I apologise for my terrible American accent there. Or... (laughs) 
like hello Fader a, darling yeah like yeah in like a really southern american accent like hello Fader darling like yeah i, is that I what, can't imagine how it. do you imagine it i couldn't imagine I, it in anything but british because obviously darling is like a very british yeah completely. like word it's like a term of endearment we use here a lot so obviously it makes sense for them to be british but now you've pointed out that prithian looks like literally the uk and, and all of the Thailand is, is Ireland. <laughs> literally, I'm like, uh, this is literally the, especially because uh, I think in the first book it's like, is it the human lands, and then the second book it's the fairy lands, and then they, or or is it got both in the first book? I can't remember. In the first book, it has the fairy realms, the mortal lands, and then the, all the courts, but nothing else, and then Highburn. Yeah, but now you said that it looks like the UK. In my head, Reese is canon British. Yeah, can- canon British. <laughs> I know. Well, that's because it killed me. So when I read the first books, I was living in Devon, and it's got like the the human realms as like Devon and Cornwall, <laughs> and then everything else above is like fairy realms. So I'm like, oh, I see. Well, actually, now we've said that the Night Court is Scotland, it'd be like <laughs> Scottish Reese. <laughs> I would die. Oh Hello, fair darling. <laughs> In the Shrek voice. Hello, fair darling. How is how is all the ca- like YA books becoming Shrek? Our brand. <laughs> I'm so sorry that we keep referring to them as Shrek, but <laughs> if anyone can do it. I would literally pay good money for someone to say hello, favorite darling, in like a really deep Scottish male accent. I would scream. We need it. Um, Springcourt is Wales, that... so is Tamlin Welsh? <laughs> oh my god, is Tamlin Welsh? That, that, it's course. offensive to Welsh people. <laughs> I mean, hopefully not. Oh my god, the summer court is Wales. Effective. Literally! Yeah, the Welsh accent would do it for me, to be honest. I, I love Scottish I'd be accent. like, okay, I get it, Vera, I get it. Well, to be honest, though, Deadly, and listeners, if... Like, if <laughs> Reese is Scottish and then Illyria is just over, like, is like, like past the Night Court, then, like, Cassian is going to have a fucking, like, strong Scottish accent and that would just do, do oh. this for me. <laughs> yeah, he's like the Highlands. Yeah, he's like Highlands. Oh my god, this is hilarious. I don't know how we've not discussed this before, <laughs> but it's literally. Like, it literally is the UK. It kills me. I have never noticed that before. That's hilarious. Everyone get your copy out and look. Uh, and you will see the UK, island, and Europe. Well, the tip of Europe. To be fair, Feyre's village is, like, not too far from, like... I don't know if I can... I can't do geography, but it's not too far from, like, Brighton. So she won't be too far from you. <laughs> Let me look. Oh my god, it literally isn't. Hi, Feyre. I'm in the Midlands, so I'm, like, winter and dawn court. Oh, no, yeah, I'm not. I'm like right in the middle. I'm east mid, so I'd be like under the mountain. I'm Amarantha. <laughs> You're Amarantha and I'm Feyre. Peak! Ooh. Peak! <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just... I don't know. It's fine. Right. You're, you're near the know. Weaver's Cottage. Oh, Fab. So <laughs> oh, God. Um, anyway, sorry, we're going off. <laughs> we really went on a tangent there, but that was like it. When I opened the book, I was like, oh my God, cute. That's Felt hilarious, sweet. I've never noticed that before. Four books in, you just noticed that. Five <laughs> books. Um, I think we've we've really gotten to the point yeah. now. We've, we've gone... Oh, now we can no, go we've into... not. No, we've not. We've got to discuss the last thing. And it's that stupid promise that Reese and Feyre made to die oh, for each other. my God. I feel like we, we did know about this, to be honest. They definitely made that promise with each other in one of the other books. Yeah, but I, I blacked it out. Up on it. Yeah, I blacked it out. Stupid. Why would you be willing I'm to like... leave your kids as orphans? I just could never do that. You, the plan was always to have kids. And I'm sorry, what is it with Sarah doing this? She did this with, spoiler alert, if you've not read Throne of Glass. I'm just telling you this now. Maybe skip like 30 seconds. But she did this with Kale and Irene. Yeah. They were bonded and they, if one of them dies, the other one dies. What the hell? Mm-hmm. It's too much. It's, I, I just like, really? Oh. What kind of Romeo and Juliet? 
I know, it's so gross. I'm sorry, I'd not... No way in this lifetime I'm dying for a boy. Literally, and also, especially, as you say, they were always planning to have kids. They know those kids are going to have real long lives. So, like, yeah. Why? what are you I doing? I just don't get it. Like, it's going to be agony to lose a loved one. Honestly, I couldn't even think what it would be like. Like, you mm. not, but you have to live, because the plan was always for her to have kids and them to have a family, and I could never understand why we would want to leave them without parents and i know that you have like a family in that like, mm-hmm. as and cass and more and amarin and nesta and elaine to look after them but that is not the same no so why would if you could only lose one of you why would you want to lose both literally oh huh. okay on that note us. Us. let's go into the things we liked because there there was i know we've harped on about what we didn't like but we want to end with all the the juicy good stuff, the good stuff. So yeah, buckle up. And we we can rant about things that we passionately dislike a lot. So that's probably why it seems like we didn't like the book. But I promise we loved it. <laughs> we loved it. I know. I just think I am a big fan of not holding everything you love to uh like on a pedestal that you it's not yeah. free from criticism. Um, so I think it's healthy to admit that there are problems and flaws in things you like and see how things could be improved. Yeah, definitely. I agree. But yeah, on to the things that we freaking <laughs> loved. Our things first that we loved note in, in capitals is S-M-U-T. What does that smell? Smell? Smut. <laughs> oh, deadly. <laughs> What that was that our smell? first dislike. No. Oh, cringe. <laughs> we loved the smart. We loved the smart. I'm sorry. I'm confused. I, I know I said this was my opening line. That I'm confused about the wingspan order now. Because I am. <laughs> like, because we've always... Yeah, Deadly, do you say what you said to me about... I was like, they said that Reese had the biggest wingspan. But from what we were described about Cassian... How, if, if, I'm sorry, okay, we're just going to get crude now, so if you don't want to hear the crudeness, maybe just skip a little bit. I'm going to go into some detail about some fairy dick. So, (laughs) and tie my hair up, we're going for it. Um, Oh my god. I don't know how much bigger you can get than up to your belly button. Unless your belly button's quite far down, I'm not sure how fucking bigger how much bigger you can Literally. get before that becomes and like, uncomfortable he, he had to ease it in like inch by inch <laughs> well, my... <laughs> this is oh my I, god that was, it was so explicit i can't even it was like, <laughs> it was so <laughs> but explicit, like god. because i feel like favorite and reese were just doing it from off the bat there yeah. was like no problem <laughs> favorite and reese like... barely did foreplay <laughs> And it was fine. But with Nestor and Cassian, she couldn't... She couldn't Literally even couldn't. take and it like... on in one. But Reese is supposed to have the biggest wingspan. Or I think I've seen like loads of people say that Az has the biggest wingspan. But even that in itself is blowing my mind because I don't understand how it can get much bigger. <laughs> That's mad. Literally mad. And like, you said it to me when I mentioned it. Um, you were like, "Well, Reese's wings aren't real. He like pops them out, so he probably is like, Ooh, they're big today." And I'm like, "Well, we we've True, heard Cassian. Yeah, yeah, we did say that. Yeah, like Reese's wingspan, he can make that whatever he wants because he makes his own rings. But Azriel and Cassian, we've got a shrewd depiction of like their wingspan because that's their." I wings. still can't believe how explicit it was. Like, I'm thinking back and I'm like, that was just porn. Like, straight up porn. It was straight up porn, but you know what? I can't even pretend I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> it it like was my, just my jaw like, was on the floor. Oh. And like, as you say, <laughs> Pharaoh and Reese barely had the any foreplay. This book was so much foreplay. It was like... It was foreplay. And I really love, I don't know why, this is fan fiction. This is because if you'd have asked me like before I started reading, no, 
recently actually this is a recent thing of mine if you'd have asked me before yeah. do i enjoy people day talking to me and been like nah just get with it i just <laughs> i'd rather just be silent recently this has become a very a thing that i enjoy very much reading about don't know why maybe it's just like me the yeah. act of reading it but the day talking this was fantastic i was like yes talk. i was like tell her what you're gonna do to her tell me <laughs> tell me what is happening right now explain it to me i loved it Elite. Cassian Fully has a way elite. with words, ladies. Cassian has a way with the words. A oh, very good way Nesta with words. just takes no shit. Like, when she left and was like, mm, would it be an last one, girl? I was like, yes, oh, girl. She's brave because there's no way I'd be able to get... Well, I'm a bit of a savage. But... <laughs> but for Cassian, I don't think I could. I don't think I that could That was savage. That was like... Oh... <laughs> like when he came in his pants, I was like, "Oh, <laughs> she did that." What even was this book? Like whenever we mentioned it, I'm like, "Oh my god, that happened!" Oh my god, that it, happened. It was the fact that she was just like straight up, like he was like, "I don't want to hurt you," and she was like, "Hurt me," and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh god." She straight we... up just said BDSM. <laughs> literally oh my god like, oh my this god is... can we discuss right the training bit where she was like i want to have a three-way with az and cassian i was like queen are you reading my mind the thing is though when she was like describing them i went in my head i went three-way because that's just automatically apparently where my head goes now i go three-way and then two lines later she's like i kind of want both of them and i was like me and you've got the same brain like nesta you are <laughs> You are my inner monologue. I was like, me and you are the same person. Because I thought the exact same thing. And it was cruel. It was cruel that Sarah taunted us with that and didn't give it to us. Oh my God. Literally. I thought it was going to happen. I was like, well, lines being drawn in the sand. So. It is getting worse and worse. <gasps> like, oh my goodness. And oh that, my God, that bit killed me. Out. When they were fighting and she was just stood there like, um... I'm gonna get some water <laughs> because. I was like, but then surely they were like going back to the scent thing. Like surely they would know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they wouldn't. They can't read minds like Reese, but like they wouldn't know exactly yeah. what she was thinking. But that thought, the thought that mortifies me. <laughs> the one thing I didn't like. Sorry, the only things we didn't like again. But I hated. I hated it when Cassian said that like all three of them had sex in the same room. That just oh my god! <laughs> Honestly, I, I think I blocked that out. It was gross. It was when he was like, I was like, because I just like my, my mind automatically like thinks about it in detail, and I'm like sat there thinking, oh my god, what if I was one of those girls and I just looked up and made eye contact with another one of them girls, just getting like absolutely banged the shit out of where all their wings are like flapping about. I was just thinking about the worst case scenario. I can you just hear like wings slapping going. And then you hear like ball slapping. No. Like, no. <laughs> That's all I was thinking. Sorry, that was gross. I really do apologise for that because that's just all I was this, thinking. I mean, I know this podcast is marked as explicit, but damn. I'm sorry, but if we didn't if we didn't expect us to talk about the smut in this way, I, mean, I do apologise. But to be honest, you, yeah, you've mind. read this book. Like, you, if you've read this book, this shouldn't shock you. Tbh. No. Yeah. But the sex and the orgy thing kind of weirded me out for some reason. I don't know why. When I'm like... <laughs> Wasn't it his <laughs> mum's hut just... as well? <laughs> that hut has seen some... The poor hut... The... It's a good job the hut doesn't have like a personality like the, the fucking house oh, wind. Like the house. Because honestly... What the hell? Like, if those walls could <laughs> those talk, walls they'd be seen traumatized. <laughs> Oh, another thing, another thing that I fucking, we didn't add to the fucking list of dislikes, but the kind of like goes in hand in hand with the smut is that the fact that everyone was like, why does everyone roar when they orgasm? I hate it. <laughs> what does that mean? Cassie and roar. And I just go, Rrr! that's all I'm thinking. And, go, and that killed me when he like roared and I was like... You're staying at their house over Christmas. They're all high fay. <laughs> they're, up, they're upstairs, sat around the fire, with all their superhero being like, um, did he just roll? Ew. And then like, 
Cassie, um, not Cassie, and uh, Asriel's in the house of wind when they're like, shit. <laughs> when they're like, going at it, and he's just sat there like, oh god, oh god. <laughs> this is just, just lying there, like, please. In bed. Yeah, like, murder me, please. <laughs> Cauldron, have mercy on my soul. Oh my god. Oh my god. The, I, the, I mean, the house. Literally. I love the house. The fact the house yeah, the reads house was... smart. We love the, the house, house is us. like dropping in smart. Yeah, the the house is us. The house oh. are the readers. The house is us and the listeners. Just literally encouraging that cute it. little the little sleepover they had, where the house was like adorable, giving them gifts. It was so cute, and it was so nice to see the, that like, side of Nesta. I loved. You know what? I, I that's what I loved about the book. Like how mundane everyone was. I just loved yeah. it. I don't like, know they why. weren't like, massive warriors. Like... They they were just chilling and having a sexy book club. Yeah, sexy book club. That's <laughs> this is what we're doing now. We're chilling and having a sexy book club. <laughs> yeah, your basic is a sexy book club. We are welcome, the Valkyries. Welcome to the sexy book club. We are the Valkyries. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. You're our little Valkyries, listeners. We're gonna call you that from now on. You're our little Valkyries. I love that. Welcome to the Valkyrie yeah. Squad. Valkyrie squad, adorable. Nice We're the house, you're me. the Valkyries. <laughs> We're the house of wind, you're the Valkyries. Because <laughs> we, we chat a lot of wind, oh my god, literally. But it's the <laughs> Valkyries blow out hot also. <laughs> <laughs> the Valkyries was such a cool concept, and I was so glad that we got to explore it. And, like, Nesta made proper, real strong female friendships throughout the book. Like, organic. Honestly. Yes. And do you know what? We don't get a lot of, like, female friendships in YA. Mm-hmm. It's always love triangles with men. And you know what? I don't like men. I'm sorry for a man watching this. <laughs> I do love you. I'm joking. <laughs> I do love men. It's just, you know what? Sometimes I'm a man-hating woman and I can't control that. It just comes out <laughs> in me. But, yeah, I just love the, the Valkyrie. As soon as, like, this, like, best of men mentioned Valkyries she was like well Valkyries I was like oh I literally gasped because I was just like I literally. freaking love Valkyries because my whole like I love the Valkyries in Thor if you haven't watched Thor there's like uh, in the, like later on in the series the Valkyries are introduced I was like fucking they're amazing. badass badass female warriors please yeah give it to me and literally, I was so excited and I, I was not disappointed with Emery and Gwyn like just <sighs> phenomenal like friendship like a trio it just it's made so my heart good. happy oh it just par- it like, really did the parallels of them doing the trial versus like the the boys and like oh. how they do it differently oh it was amazing i loved it honestly i did i just thought they were fantastic i just thought that those, those three really just made it for me i just loved everything about all three of them i really hope that we get to see more of like Gwen and yeah. Emery because they were just fantastic. I just love them and I just think they've got so much potential. Like they're so cool. Like Emery's they're, story. They're, their characters are so fleshed out. Emery's story. Oh my god. Emery's story and like Gwen's story and the fact that they like shared it with each other and it was just like they shared their trauma and the- that was just the perfect way that they should have really. Uh. Like that was like a really good like way of showing how friendships can help heal trauma and it just like a healthy way mm. of doing it and it just made made me really emotional. I just loved them because like obviously I have really great groups of friends and it just was really reminiscent of them. I was like, I just love you all. Yeah. It's like, deadly. <laughs> it's me, and you. Literally, it definitely it it had it really captured that spirit of like strong female friend groups that can really share everything and have that kind of load shared as a load lightened. Mm-hmm. A mantra kind of it was so well done. Oh. <laughs> Loved it. Just cried in yeah. the club. It's fine. Healthy female friendships in what in YA and new adult fantasy is please. more of what we so want. Warm. Please, please, please. We I just it. want fantastic female friendships. Please. Um, <laughs> another thing we literally died about was the dance. Oh my god holy crap way to get me crying honestly i was in tears because i can't deal with how perfect cassian is and that's just on me because no one is ever going to live up to him in my eyes yeah 
Absolutely. How am I ever going to find a boyfriend when Cassian has set the bar so high? When he's like asking Morrigan to teach him to dance and he t- I, oh I was just, I was inconsolable. I was an emotional mess. It just killed me. It really did. Oh. I was like, what? I was like, where would a boyfriend that learns to dance for me? I was like, where do I find one? <laughs> it just hurt me. Like, it's just, it reminded me of something and I can't think of what it reminded me of. Oh. I can't even remind me of something, and it just it got me so upset. I don't know what it was, but I'm just I'm getting I think upset thinking that, about it now. Like that and him buying her the little music, like box thing, because <laughs> he like realized that she loved music so much. Oh my goodness, it was oh it just it makes your heart like happy but also sad. But like... the the Christmas present because when I read I'm sorry I'm crying I'm actually <laughs> <laughs> when I read a quarter Daddy's of, cried um, on the Zoom I know when I read a quarter of Frost and Starlight and he threw that <gasps> Christmas present in the river I was I was I was just in tears I was flooded I was like but Nesta yeah. get your act together get your act together now Someone needs to kick her ass into gear, and then she got dragged into that house. And I went, "Yeah, she needs to be dragged back. She needs, she needs a sorting out because she did need a sorting out. Nesta needed. She to did. Be she out. really she did. Needed to un- she needed to unlock her full potential that we all knew she had. That Nesta, that mm. Nesta knew she had inside. She knew. Feyre knew she had it. She needed to see it. And I'm not having her hurt Cassie any longer than what she should have. And it killed me when he threw that in the <laughs> in the river. I thought, what is it? I needed oh. to know. We never even found out. And then he told us in this book, and I was like crying. Then he bought her that freaking magical music box music I, was like, I'm gonna, I was like you really really are killing me today Sarah you've, re- you've really done it <laughs> your standards are too me. high now standards know, are, are I gone just, I'm sorry it was all you need to do buy me a music a magical music player and I'm that, yours, actually apparently. that scene where um, Nesta was in the church and she had the singing was so beautiful as well yeah like Nesta and music I think is such a it was such an interesting love to kind of pair her with and such a great way to show her healing by embracing music more and more. Yeah, um, I feel like it was... That's like oh. a parallels thing that she's done, Sarah, with... Mm. So, like, Ness... <laughs> and Feyre is... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Feyre is painting is her creative mm. outlet. That's what she, how she... <laughs> That's how she like dealt with her trauma. Why Sorry, I'm just thinking about the fact that like every, the, certain people have a headcanon that Feyre is bad at art because all I can <laughs> think about is <laughs> when the book started and like Cassie walked into the house, the, ha- the river house, and he was like, "Oh, Feyre's paintings are over the wall." All I could think about was these terrible paintings covering this massively expensive house. <laughs> That's all I could think of. And I just find that so funny. Anyway, back to the serious thing that I was going on about was that obviously Favor uses the painting to help her with her trauma. Nesta uses the music to help her with her trauma. Mm-hmm. I assume Elaine, I don't know. Gardening. Plant some seeds. Yeah, yeah plant gardening. some seeds. Oh, <laughs> actually, can we take a moment by how heartbreaking it was that there was no portraits of Nesta at the beginning of the book in that house? Oh. <laughs> that was sly. That was really sly. That was, was like, just... oh, so we're starting this with violence. You woke up and chose to punch me in the throat, Sarah J. Mars. How dare you? <laughs> I was hoping that she just had them all in a room and she didn't want to embarrass. Nesta so by was I. Them up in the house. <sighs> we'll just keep. But that. she we'll, painted we'll her think, in the end. We'll give her the... Yeah, we'll give her the benefit of the doubt that she's got a Nesta room that she has all these pictures of her and Nesta and. Elaine That's in there, probably us all sweet. projecting from fucking uh, Lady Midnight, but hey, hey. Um... Oh. oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, we'll go with it. She's got a Nesta room that she's like devoted to Nesta, but yeah, that was sly. That did hurt me. That hurt that me. That really did as hurt a, me. As a person with a sister, that hurt me. It would have hurt my feelings if my sister had done that. Completely. But Even if I'm glad that by the end, there was a picture up and my heart was happy. Yeah, symbolic. You have to earn Completely. the place on the wall. You have to earn your your spot on the pyramid in Feyre's house. <laughs> yeah. 
Also, I really enjoyed um how this mating bond was different to From face and, others yeah. we've seen. Yeah, where it's like, oh my god, they're connected and all they can do is sleep with each other and or see each other all the time. And it's like, this one had restraint and it was, oh, it was good. Yeah, and I think that really just, that's like the adulthood of their like relationship. Because obviously Feyre was, mm. I think I forget how young Feyre was in actor. She was like, a she's teenager. very young. Yeah, she's a teenager, and she, in comparison to like Reese, she's so much younger. And yeah, completely. He obviously gave her that time to come around. He didn't tell her straight away that they were mates when he realised because yeah. that would have just mm-hmm. been wrong. And he <laughs> he gave her time to adapt to that, and then as soon as they did know, it was like chemical. Um, I yeah, mean, there was like, a lot, quite a lot of build up really between stopped. them two. Yeah, but yeah, it was different with um, Nesta and Cassie and the fact that they, um, it was so well, I, like, Cassie really understood her and was like, mm. I can't go out and say that she's my mate straight away because it will freak her out. And I think it just, oh, Cassie's just so perfect, that's the thing, like, he's just like an angel, like, the fact that he just takes her feelings into account and stuff and he just doesn't force and anything on her. respects her boundaries, yeah. Yeah, I just, I love that. And like they, their relationship is so different from face and... Yeah, it's, uh, yeah and I think it is, what, like, as you say, they're both, well, obviously, they're, Asriel's, like, ancient, but um, Nesta is an adult. Like, so she's approaching the relationship in a very different way. Yeah. Um, but, like, I think they also, both I think, did. yeah. I was impressed with Cass because I always knew he was like a really great character, but this book really solidified how he like respects people needing space and time and but also really knows that they can achieve and pushes people and it's oh it's great. Yeah, and I think that they just their relationship is just I just love it. I, the way it's kind of it was kind of norm like so there's nothing normal about Feyre and like Reese's relationship and how they came to like to fruition, but like it's like something like sort of modern and normal about the fact that they they were like having casual sex and mm. they they still had the like enemies to lovers kind of like tension, but they were just having like casual sex because that's how relationships are in the 21st century now. Like you, especially yeah. like mm-hmm. with 20 like you're in your early 20s, you sleep around with people a lot which Nesta did she did sleep around with a lot of people as everyone liked to point out a lot of a lot of times um literally and I was like um excuse me the the little mean Cassie and Azrael and Reese always talk about how they had fucking orgies so yeah ex- oh, yeah maybe back up. don't slut shame yeah um and they walked in on Amran fucking riding that guy so <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, everyone's getting it. Um, apart from Az and Morrigan, apparently. But oh well, no, <laughs> Moore's kind of Moore's kind of getting it with Summer Court. Oh, true. Um, yeah, it's just Az. Poor Az. <laughs> Az is probably getting it. But we don't hear about it. Um, Probs. Their relationship. It was like a friends with benefits type motive, mm-hmm. and they were all. It's just casual, and then it obviously they were mates, so it was inevitable that they were gonna like be together in the end. Um, but it was but just refreshing. It's just I, I different. Don't think they, yeah, they didn't acknowledge the mating bond until Christmas when they were like the golden threads connected them across the universe or whatever. Um, yeah, and she was like, "I'm yours." I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god." <laughs> it was so good, and it was like the way Nesta went from being so hard and like just not letting herself feel anything so then feeling so tender with Cassian chef's it kiss. literally melted my heart yeah and like when they were having an argument because he said that they were mates and she was like don't say that because I don't like that word it freaks me out um mm. I guess it was a bit like when people say they don't want to put like a a like a label on a relationship. Like a label on it, yeah. Yeah, the thought of like being tied down freaks them out. She was like, oh, it freaks me out. And then obviously Cassian got a little bit frustrated because it is a, a, sorry, it is a like frustrating thing when you're obviously so in love with mm. someone and you devote to them and they don't want to acknowledge that. It's like, 
it's Sos not Lucia. like easy it's not easy to accept no but mm. when she i was so proud of her when she was like no take him away myself away from the situation i'm gonna see my girls i'm gonna get them to like help me and then she was like i just want to go back and apologize straight away that was that growth because there's no way she would have done that she just said something so nasty no. and like cutting and she just didn't even do that and she didn't want to and she like left and she took herself from away from the situation and like, my heart just like was like full oh. because i was so proud of her for dealing with that so well literally yeah she handled it so well oh we love her yeah, we do love her. We won't have any Nesta slander on this podcast. So if you have Nest, if you don't like Nesta, keep it to yourself. We don't want to hear about it. <laughs> um, um, we well, I've always been on the Azrael train, um, but Na- Danny has now joined the Azrael train. You know what, guys? I'll hold my hands up and say I didn't give a shit about Azrael for the first four books. <laughs> I'm being honest. The boy said nothing. He said nothing. He gave me nothing. It was like drawing blood from a stone. I was trying my hardest. I was going, Asriel, share. Share with me. Be witty. Be funny. Give me some personality. I dare you. He was giving me nothing. I tried, I tried, I tried. I thought, you're boring. Then we get to Aquawar and he was like, got Elena out. And I thought, oh, world's most boring couple right there. If that's going to be a thing, that's going to be the world's most boring couple going. Right. Then we get to A Court of Silver Flames. Within the first 10 minutes of this book, I'm going, I'm a simp. What the hell? <laughs> Why did she not give us this personality sooner? I'd have been on the simp train from day one if I'd have seen this side <laughs> of him walking in, walking in all like morning guys, that I'd known exactly what's going. Hilarious. Absolutely. As we 100%. That's when so he funny. bought Nesta that light for her books. Oh my God. I feel like me. that was aimed at all us book lovers we were like oh i yes. died and went to heaven i died Completely. i'm deceased right now this is my ghost talking i'm haunting my house because <laughs> as for his behavior getting her that glowy bookmark ruined me killed me literally ended my life dead deceased i'm, I'm dead actually going to Danny's funeral this is yeah. where this podcast is airing you're all invited actually here lies I'll Danny. Stream it. <laughs> it lies Danny deceased from as real simping till the end. That's what my headstone will say. <laughs> simping till the end. <laughs> simping till the end. <laughs> ashes to ashes. I'm simp to dying. simp. <laughs> A court of silver flames. <laughs> yeah, I'm a massive simp for Asriel now. That's three way. Give it to me. We so we were lucky enough to get our hands on a copy of the American extra chapter. Um oh, and oh, oh, oh. how did that book make how did that extra chapter I'm sorry, first of all, if you live in the UK, I'm telling you now, we got screwed over with that Waterstones exclusive chapter. It was nowhere near <laughs> as good as the American exclusive chapter. Oh my god. Oh my god. It wasn't. It was kinda cute. Was it cute? That was kind of the wrong word. It was kind of gross. <laughs> there was a bit... It. I didn't like it. I'm sorry, this is kind of spoilers. If you haven't read the extra chapter from the UK version, this is a spoiler now. I'm warning you now. There's a bit where, ha- where Feyre and Rita are having sex and she shows him the baby inside of her while, they're, while he's balls deep in it. And it's gross. And it freaked me out and I thought, this is wrong. <laughs> This is gross. Like this. I didn't like this. But you know what? I've read the American extra chapter. Fucking, it was an as real one. And as real was saying some filthy things, some filthy, filthy things out of that quiet Selfie. little mouth of his. He was, he was <laughs> really, really giving it to me. And I was like, you are all lucky. You Americans are so lucky that you got the good stuff. We got the, well... <laughs> We got the, the X-ray the fun, fetish, the fun pregnancy stuff that we didn't really want, but we wanted. We wanted the kinky as real stuff, but we didn't get that. You got it, but I do recommend if you can get a copy of the American book, read the extra chapter mm-hmm. because it was great, and it sort of gives us an insight into what I think is going to be the next book. We don't mm. know what the book yeah, is. Yeah, I, yet, I feel not... like it's the next natural progression. 
surely. Yeah, to have the next it's... Archer on sister. Yeah, it, it just makes sense, or... I feel like. Yeah. Because... Yeah, I did. I, I feel like obviously Nesta will continue, but there was not much more to tell in her story. No, no, no. It was definitely going to be. I think it would probably rather than get from Elaine's point of view. I'm, I'm hoping this is the case. I'm saying I don't think it's going to be Elaine, but I'm hoping it's not Elaine's point of view because <laughs> I don't see myself changing my mind on how much. Well, I mean, watch I us surprised. read it and then have to rescind this whole podcast be like we now love i it. don't think that I, you know if we read it from a point of view maybe we all didn't dislike her as much and i don't hate her at all i don't have i don't hate her i, sh- I just find her a, a slight a slight just I, yeah i just <laughs> i i don't feel like i had any emotions about her which is almost worse yeah i agree i just like i'm just like bit... oh she's there yeah she's and she's so mean to doing... lucian no, like with with the for the Christmas present. <laughs> it hurts me. What the hell did Lucian do? Because everyone else seems to be fairly okay with Lucian, apart from yeah. Elaine and Azriel. And I'm really confused. Like obviously he was like complacent to what happened with Tamlin, but Feyre is friends with Lucian. Yeah. And like they kind of all get on. So I'm really confused as to why Elaine's <laughs> really against him. I don't understand. Like, obviously, Lucy, obviously, like, Lucy is not I completely, I completely got it when she was like first turned because she was depressed. Was it, like, like we've all gone through, they've all gone through their mm. stages of depression when they turn into high fae. High fae, and yeah. she was depressed at start at the start, and she just didn't want anything to do with him because she was depressed and she was struggling mentally. Now I am so confused. She's so mean. Literally. Like when he gave her the Christmas present, and she just and she dead ass went, like, she didn't say ew. anything. I was like, that is so rude, so rude, so nasty, and so rude. And then, like, I think, like, I think Feyre makes a comment about her, like, about Elaine's hands being all ripped up from where she's been in the garden, and then she goes, "Well, if she used like the gloves that Lucy and got her, then maybe they wouldn't be all." Like Ooh. ripped up, and I was like, "Ooh, so favorite favorite feels the same way." But I just can't understand. Yes. Like, I don't understand. So, from this is kind of a spoiler. I'm saying spoilers. Please just read the extra chapter before you listen to this po- <laughs> this podcast. But I'm saying spoilers <laughs> because I I really don't want to like be responsible for spoiling for something for something that they don't want to read or know about before they've read. Yeah. Obviously, mm-hmm. but in the book. In the extra chapter, Asriel has a moment with Elaine, a very sexually charged moment. Mm-hmm. And then he also has a little bit of a moment with another character, spoiler alert. Which we prefer, yeah. Gwyn from <sighs> it makes so Valk, much sense. from the Valkyries. Gwyn. A and I squad. absolutely ship that. I absolutely oh, ship I love it. And I ship him and Elaine. I don't know if I necessarily ship Lucy and Elaine. Maybe if we no. got a bit more interaction between the two, I don't know, but I don't ship Asriel and Elaine, and I definitely ship Gwyn and Elaine. Uh, Gwyn and Elaine, definitely. <laughs> Let's go for that instead. Gwyn and Asriel. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for it. I'm sure there's a Wattpad somewhere. Um, but yeah, I yeah, I mean, you touched on it there, but I really loved Feyre in this book. Like, oh, more than I've loved her in any other book. She was yeah. sassy. She was supportive. It was when Eris was, like, proposing uh, to marry Nesta to Reese, And she was in Reese's head, like, bitch, what don't the fuck? Dare. Yeah, she's like, don't you fucking dare. I, oh, absolutely. It was and great. I was like, yes, Feyre. I, I will absolutely put my hands up and say, fucking Feyre is a fantastic sister. She really is. She obviously... Mm. Is loving and she cares about her sisters so much and like yeah i just i don't i really love favor in this book i agree she's never been my favorite character but i, d- I did love her in this book i really had a lot of she, respect I, for everything her. she said i was like yes absolutely <laughs> yeah. oh great just applauses all around one thing i do wish i enjoyed it and i wish they'd um explored it more was nesta's connection to the mother I loved that. I love that she had a special connection to the mother. Yeah, we. Um, how have we not even spoken about that whole thing in the, with in the, uh, where she just, with the crown, and where the, she rose out of the 
Oh my With the goodness. mask, sorry, not the crown. Yeah. The mask. She rose with, out of oh, bog. With the army and, of the dead. That is some queen shit. And Asriel and um, Cassian bow, like, knelt to her. <sighs> oh. The serotonin, my feminist heart felt in that moment. To see I literally was Illyrian like, I warriors alone in my studio flat. <laughs> The fact that she, like, brought two Illyrian, like, warriors to their knees with her power. Oh. Empowering as fog. Empowering as fog, Literally. absolutely. I was like, get me to a bog, bring me a, a mask, I'm ready. We got to that bit where she was, like, so scared. She was, like, felt powerless. And that she'd been dragged under the water by that horrible thing. Oh my god, what was yeah, that? the... Uh, what was it? Kelpie? Was it a Kelpie? Kelpie. Yeah, and I've, I've read something else with the Kelpie and it was horrible. Oh, in Dark Artifices by Cassandra Clare, yeah. was, uh, they have Kelpies yeah. in that and they're horrible. They, do. they are horrible. And, the, yeah. and there's Kelpies in the Spiderwick, uh, Spiderwick universe as well and they're scary as hell. Uh, yeah, and I think there's Kelpies in the Kel- Cruel Prince. Yes, there are. Mentioned. It's, it's yeah, basically yeah, yeah. A, a creature lore, that draws people to their, to their death in uh, water it's yeah it's like i think it's old british or irish folklore yeah um and like i used to get told because i i grew up near dartmoor uh, which has a lot of bogs where like literally you could step in it and literally fall up to your neck um so we were told that there were kelpies in those pools which is why you never went near them um ah so I'm afraid of Kelpies just from a childhood thing anyway. <laughs> so yeah, in that scene, so I was scary. like, fuck, 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 no, delete, delete. And it was like dragging her, like, ugh, forcing Oh, like, and the, its tongue, when she was describing its tongue, I was like, it was, <laughs> I was like, no, queen, no. And then she like got the mask and I was like, yeah, beat his ass, fucking little Kelpie Oh, she ass. beheaded like, him. Mama. Beheaded that ancient Getting ass Kelpie. Oh, oh just, just do that. the power! I was like, yes, and it makes and the fact that she like had to share that with Reese and like Reese saw that and I bet he was like, oh shit. <laughs> he was like, Ooh. like, I'm sort of sad that she gave up the powers because I really think she could have been fucking powerful as fuck. Yeah. I definitely like, think there's she... still some residual stuff. She had to give. I understand. She had to give up. Give it back so that she could let go of her, yeah, like her like trauma. It was like a metaphor for that, I assume. But mm. as like we said, I would have loved to have seen her take on Reese just one time, not for Completely. any like, not for any of her like to become like high lady or anything. Just no, no, just just for pure. It would have been cool. Yeah, yeah, pure entertainment, <laughs> like Fight Club. But we, I mean, we still have the the weapons that she forged with her power yes um, oh that'll be exciting to like read so about. i'm hoping that she can still because they they said there was still a whisper in her so i'm like could she use that to like yeah those she powers? didn't get rid of all of her power she still has the power like powers because but it's she's just not fae. as like brimming no it's just not the... she gave back the piece of the cauldron yeah 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 so yeah, she's obviously blessed by the mother, like she has that bond. So some she has some power. It's just yeah, and she's a Valkyrie so now. She's oh, and the Valkyries, yes, we stand yeah. the Valkyries. Give me a book about the Valkyries, just reading smart and having sleepovers. Happy. <laughs> I physically cannot wait. I can't wait. It's so I I, I just I just enjoyed it so much. Like I've I seen so many people not having the best it. time with it, or yeah, dragging it, and I'm like. It's a good, but like it really handles trauma well. Yeah. Um. It really has great character growth, and it's just fun as well. And also, there's some yeah. killer smart. So, what else do you want? Yeah, it's killer smart, hella entertaining. Um, I just yeah loved it, loved it. I did give it four yeah, stars. I, I, I couldn't give it five stars because the writing, no, it's, like we've said, is I mean, not good. It's not but... a five star. It's not a five star book, but it's entertaining. Yeah, and like, entertainment. That's all we ask for. Yeah, that's uh, the only reason I read books is for entertainment. I don't read it to like, you know, learn. <laughs> well, yeah, and like we so. we've read some books where they try to be too clever, like Wilder Girls or whatever. I mean, it's just like stop. We we it takes away the enjoyment. Wilder Girls and Deathless Girls. 
Oh my god. If, it, if it's got oh, girls in the again. title... It's not good. That's what that's what we've come to realise. If it has oh girls god. in the title, it's not good. Anyway. Well, that's just... Uh, yeah. Do we want to finish on a quick... What do we think is going to happen in the next book? Just a quick Ooh. one. Ooh. Um, I think they're cooking up stuff with that um, mage. Is he a mage? Magician? Who has the... Who yeah. turned the, the person into the firebird. Mm-hmm. Um, I think something's going to come to heads with that. He's obviously been pe- playing puppet strings with the queen and trying to get ancient artifacts. So I think there's going to... I hope it's not another big war. But I feel like if stuff happens, maybe Reese will have to become High King to I lead everyone. I definitely think they've not mentioned that for no reason. I think Reese yeah. is definitely begin to become High King. I think there's going to be a war that means I don't think he's going to go for it like the way that Amran wants him to. I think that there's going to be a war mm. and it's going to mean that he's going to become High King because of that. Like, With the mage yeah, it's that going to be said, like yeah. thrust upon the throne. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. And now he's got his heir. I think that yeah. it's going to become a pretty solid thing. I hope that we get some, like... I think the next book will definitely be Asriel and... And Elaine. Elaine. And hopefully Gwyn. And... <laughs> Give us more Gwyn. Give us more Valkyrie. We, That's all we want. We say we don't like love triangles, but we'd be willing to read the book in the love triangle <laughs> the way that we wanted it to. Um, maybe it'll be a love square, a love, oh my God. an actual love triangle, and not a love corner. It maybe it'll be if, an if, actual yeah. love triangle. If, if we bring, I don't know, maybe a lady will be like, "Hey, Lucian's all right," and then Lucian will be like, "Hey, Gwyn's all right," and then it'll all just maybe. I'm I'm trying to think what I think is going to happen. Um, I want Gwyn to run off with Emery, <laughs> leave all the boys. I think Morrigan and Emery. Oh, I see that actually. I could imagine that happening. Yeah, that could work. Ooh. I hope so. Now I've said that, I hope that. I've yeah, me too. Right. I'm invested Emery now, Morgan. Sarah. We know you listen to this podcast. Do it, <laughs> <laughs> Sarah. We know you. You're basic. Um, please, <laughs> please do us a favor and say that Emery and Morgan get together. That's all we want, please. Absolutely. Because that means that, like, but then who would? Oh no, yeah. So if, so if Elaine ended up with Lucian, mm-hmm. and then Asriel ended up with Gwyn, Emery yep. ended up with Morrigan, and then obviously Amran's with her boy, that guy <laughs> 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 that we don't know his name from the summer court. <laughs> him um then that would be perfect yeah all all lined up all perfect ready to be the high king's court done <gasps> yeah oh my god but then but then if i'm sorry this is just me thinking about <laughs> things um if reese becomes high lord high king who would be high lord of the Night call. Ooh. I mean, I could see. I was gonna say I could see Cassia, but I can more see as if if he was Morrigan. gonna. Oh, hi, lady. Amran. Amran. Ooh. I feel like Amran. I don't know. I don't know if Amran would want that because she likes being no. a general. I don't know if she'd want to be high. We hi need lady. like. Yeah, I'm. I'm interested to see where it goes next. I'm like. I I feel like it is just getting as as we say we now we know the characters it's just getting more and more like oh we're back with these guys what's going to happen now uh, rather than yeah. we don't need any more world building we don't need any more lore like it just we know it all we know it yeah we just need some some entertain entertaining fight scenes and smart yeah and that that's we're simple beings. Yeah, and I think that brings us to a good end to our bonus episode of You Basic, where we discussed A Court of Silver Flames. We really hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. If you did enjoy it, 
do you know what just please we want to hear about the whole reason we do this podcast is because we want to hear your opinions on stuff as well as our opinions so yeah if you want to talk a court of silver flames because we always want to talk a court of silver flames dm us <laughs> on instagram Hit at your up. basic podcast um yeah at your basic podcast on instagram at your basic 16 on twitter, twitter. and exciting exciting Ooh. new development to your basic is that we now have tiktok so you can follow us on tiktok at your basic podcast as well yeah where because we have joined some wild BookTok. shenanigans over there yes yeah we love book talk so drop us a comment drop us a dm tweet us all of that good stuff yeah and we're yeah. excited to see you for the next episode until then stay safe and read some good fairy smut um, stay, yeah. stay smutty <laughs> <laughs> bye bye guys bye